What's up, YouTube? This is Mathos97, and welcome back to another episode of WWE 2K14 Multiverse Mode. This is episode number four, and we're going to kick off the show with Antonio Cesaro versus Drew McIntyre. Um, yeah, I could talk more, but I'm not going to. Okay, sorry about that awkward intro there, but uh, we're here with some more W2K14 Multiverse kicking off the show with one third of 3MB, Drew McIntyre. And uh, so far from what we've seen, 3MB is indeed the number one contenders for the tag team titles. After they got two victories in a row in our Multiverse mode, they've earned themselves a title shot. So at Extreme Rules, it will be 3MBs, he's Slater, and Drew McIntyre versus... Of course, the real Americans, Antonio Cesaro and Jack Swagger, for the Tag Team Championships. So, that's something to look forward to at the pay-per-view, I know. Probably could have done a little bit of a better job announcing some of these matches, but... Uh, if there's any any sort of, you know, throw-in matches you want to see at the pay-per-view, be sure to let me know down in the comments section. Or, alright, Google screwed everything up, so... Uh, send, me an, send me a YouTube message, uh, comment if you can. I don't know. What, whatever way, follow me, or not, not follow me, uh, send me a Twitter, or, or God, send me a tweet or something, jeez, y you know what I'm trying to say, if you, any way possible, if you have any ideas, make sure to let me know, and, uh, could throw them in, or, I don't know, I ugh, forgot to check with them, and by them, I mean Yellow and Vita, about how the pay-per-view is gonna go, so, uh, I'll have to actually get on Skype and, you know, converse with them to figure out what the whole situation for the pay-per-view is going to be, how many matches we'll get. But anyway, we have Antonio Cesaro and Drew McIntyre in, I guess, sort of a rubber match, considering these two will be in a tag team match for the tag team titles at the pay-per-view, so we get to see Cesaro versus McIntyre one-on-one -on -one as we look to end our quest to show every single entrance of every single superstar on our roster. And uh, we're getting pretty close there. We've only got a few left that we haven't shown. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we haven't shown every entrance. But anywho, big shoulder charge by Drew McIntyre. And I am, like, I'm still in the process of changing the format of these videos. So if you guys don't want to see any loading screens, let me know in the comments down below. Or, you know, same deal. If you guys don't want me to use loading screens at all, be sure to let me know. Like, even those matchup screens that I've been doing. Um, at the end, like, at the end of the show, I still plan on showing the rankings and stuff like that so we can have an idea of what's going on, the schedule, and all that good stuff, and pretty much recapping the card, but, anywho, like I said, feel free to leave your suggestions for, uh, the format of these videos, because, I mean, the matchup screens still seem kind of important, that's why I keep them, but I know there are some people who would just want to see just the matches and things like that, because that's why I did in WD13, I didn't, re didn't show the loading screens at all, so be sure to feel free to, I'm stalling, just let me know in the comments below, or dang it, you know, whatever, 
You know what I'm trying to say. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, if you want me to change up the format of these videos, be sure to let me know. So, anyway, Drew McIntyre with a kick to the gut of Antonio Cesaro. And now he's looking to take him down with a Northern Lights suplex there. And this is the first we've seen of Drew McIntyre in singles action as he gets taken down with a big belly-to-back German suplex. I don't know. And now, just rubbing his face into the mat, and an elbow to the shoulder blade area of Drew McIntyre. And now an elbow to the lower back of McIntyre. And at the time I'm doing this commentary, I mean, earlier this week, uh, the NWO DLC came out. And gotta say, that uh, Steiner screwdriver is just, jeez, oh my god. It's like an or I have an orgasm every time it happens, so get, no, no, I'm kidding. Anyway, so McIntyre is now sent into the corner, and there's a big boot there by Antonio Cesaro. And I thought he might have been going for a giant swing. Oh, but no, he's got him, setting him up for the gut wrench here. Gut wrench suplex to Drew McIntyre. I mean, everybody loves a good gut wrench. Hooks the leg. One, two, three, and wow. So, no, no neutralizer, no uppercut. Just, just the gut wrench is enough to put away Drew McIntyre. But I don't know what's what's this loss going to do. This close to the pay per view, four three MBs uh, momentum heading into that match, heading into their championship matchup. So, the real Americans carrying the momentum to this point into the pay-per-view, so I have to say, I'd put my money on the real Americans. I mean, even if 3MB had already beat, even if McIntyre had won this match, it wouldn't have really changed my opinion. And my, I have to say that I, I've got my money on the real Americans. I mean, 3MB, from what we've seen of, from, yeah, from what we've seen of them in the past, they're really more of a comedy act, but uh, you never know. This could be the turning point for 3MB. Maybe they're going to be a more serious threat. They're going to be a legit competitor in that tag team division. And that's definitely something we need in this tag team division. I mean, we don't have many teams yet. But speaking of teams, we have The Shield taking on Batista and Stone Cold Steve Austin in a tag team match. And we know Batista and Stone Cold have been forming a pretty cohesive unit as of late. So we'll see if they can get the job done here tonight against The Shield. So we're here with Batista and Stone Cold Steve Austin. They've actually been, they've been a pretty cohesive unit as of late. They've managed to pick up some victories. So last week, I actually think was their first match, and it, it was a big victory over the tag team champions. In fact, the Real Americans. So uh, depending on what goes down at the pay per view between 3MB and the Real Americans, uh, Batista and Stone Cold Steve Austin, you have to say, could be in line for a number one contender shot at the titles for, the, I believe, the next pay-per-view is over the limit, so that's something 
to look forward to potentially and I mean this would definitely give them a better chance at contending for those titles if they could defeat the shield here tonight but as we know Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins and of course including Roman Reigns but my point is the shield they've been a cohesive unit for a while I mean they know how to work as a tag team and Batista and Stone Cold still sort of getting their feet wet in this whole tag team competitor tag team competition no what am I saying this tag team division as I mean they've ta they've teamed up with superstars before I mean Batista former tag team champion but these two have never teamed together and I mean they are from different eras so they've never really had the opportunity to team up together but I mean they're still just sort of getting used to this whole working together as a tag team and so, I mean for the future hopefully their egos don't get the better of them but for now, they're putting their egos aside and they're working together as a cohesive unit. Ah, stupid phones going off. Anyway, so Batista's got Dean Ambrose for a back suplex. And now he's setting up Dean Ambrose there with some punches to the face of our hardcore champion Dean Ambrose. As we still don't know if Dean Ambrose will be defending that hardcore championship at the pay-per-view or not. As Dolph Ziggler had a chance last week, but he, he was unsuccessful in a match against Roman Reigns. And now we've got Damian Sandow, who came out and attacked Roman Reigns during the match. So, I don't know what that whole situation is there, but I guess we'll find out in maybe maybe even later in the show. Maybe we'll have a number one contenders match or something. Because, I mean, we got to have something. If the Hardcore Championship is going to be up for grabs, we're going to have to... I mean, something's got to happen there. We need to get a number one contender, but... Nice counter there from Ambrose into a DDT. And if you can tell, I am still a little sick. I mean, I've gotten pretty much over it. I took the day off yesterday from commentating because that just would have been a horrible decision on my part because it would have been crap. But for now, I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, this was uh, Wednesday, and on mo on Monday, I was just... Ugh, I just I just felt terrible. Tuesday morning, it got even worse, and I was just... I was feeling like crap I mean it was just that that day was awful I forgot to take medicine so I had a headache the whole day and it wasn't it wasn't good it wasn't pretty but now I'm feeling a lot better today no issues so hopefully I'll be able to get back into the full swing of commentating tomorrow with no uh, allergies or anything getting involved so let's get into this one Seth Rollins has but whoa what is Seth Rollins going for here he's got Batista up on the top rope oh a stunner off the top rope a jawbreaker well, stunner type maneuver. There's the jawbreaker off the top rope. Ouch. Batista may have a broken jaw here. He might have to tag in a Stone Cold as Seth Rollins takes down the animal with a hip toss counter. And now Batista's got Seth Rollins in a headlock, but Seth Rollins with a counter and an elbow to the face. Speaking of the NWO DLC, I can't wait. I don't know. With that Steiner screwdriver, I may just have to implement Scott Steiner into my other universe mode. I mean, it might just have to happen. And speaking of DLC, we'll have to... I don't know what the whole thing is with the roster. If maybe once more DLC comes out, we'll be able to kind of expand our rosters and maybe take on an extra superstar or two. I mean, it's a possibility. We're still sort of thinking about it. Uh, have to talk to them about that. Maybe see if that could be a possibility. Maybe once, maybe around the second DLC pack or so and more current guys come out and stuff like that, maybe we'll be able to expand our rosters by a superstar or two. But for now, we got to work with what we have. Anyway, Seth Rollins has Stone Cold in a headlock as the Shield had been doing a pretty good job at isolating Batista earlier on for the majority of the early portion of this match. But now Stone Cold is in the ring looking to build some momentum for that tag team as Seth Rollins now has Stone Cold for a nice snap suplex. As Amber is there still in the apron. Seth Rollins doing a lot of work here. But Stone Cold now looks like he's trying to get the upper hand, but Seth Rollins dodges. Blocks a kick. Oh, and what an enziguri to the face. Or the side of the head there by Seth Rollins. As now he's got Stone Cold Steve Austin in a headlock. As I gotta stop spinning my mic. It's just the thing I'm doing here. I'm like, I'm like holding it in my hand and I'm just spinning it for whatever reason. Uh, so that's probably not a good idea. But Stone Cold takes down Seth Rollins. <sighs> ah, sorry about that. But anyway, big punch to the gut. And he went for the punch to the face. But now Seth Rollins takes him down with a reverse DDT. And now he's just running around here. I'm not sure what he's doing. But he makes the tag into Dean Ambrose. And in my opinion, that was a bit of a poorly timed tag. As you know, he's got Stone Cold just standing in there waiting for Dean Ambrose.
but Amber is still trying to keep the upper hand here with an elbow to the face of Stone Cold, and now he ducks behind there. But he gets taken down by Stone Cold. Nice counter by the Texas Rattlesnake. And now, Dean Ambrose, nice float of her neckbreaker. And now they're just sort of standing there, but there was an uppercut by Ambrose. Stone Cold Steve Austin blocks it, but now he's countered from behind. And now, Stone Cold takes him down there with a nice belly-to-belly -belly take down. That was redundant. I got That's something I gotta work on in my commentaries, be less redundant, because that, that tends to happen, a, maybe not, not too much, but it happens a lot. So, Amber's now, is Seth Rollins getting fired up there, and now he's in the ring, working the arm of Stone Cold, and oh, what a neck breaker there by, what an elevated neck breaker by Seth Rollins, but there's a punch to the gut by Steve Austin to try and get out of it, and now Stone Cold, Stone Cold stutter, the stutter connects on Seth Rollins, and now flipping the double bird as Batista knocks Ambrose off the apron, that's gotta be it, the shield are done here, here's the cover, one, two, no, Seth Rollins kicks out, and I guess it did take Batista, no, not Batista, I guess it took a Stone Cold a little while to get into the cover, but what re what resiliency shown by Seth Rollins there to kick out of the Stone Cold stunner, no, Ambrose, bit of a dysfunctional moment there as Ambrose knocked Seth Rollins off of Stone Cold as Ambrose had, or Rollins had been going for a uh, float of her neckbreaker, but now Ambrose into the ring with a punch to the face of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And he went to take out Batista, but Batista hung Ambrose up to dry there on the apron. As Ambrose tried to get the hot tag, but unsuccessfully as Batista was able to avoid it. But there's a clothesline, and look at Ambrose. Dean Ambrose just wrestling circles around Stone Cold here, trying to wear him out. And another clothesline there, the short arm clotheslines. And Dean Ambrose just mocking Stone Cold there, just, I don't know, trying to take a shot. And I don't know. But anyway, Stone Cold, backbreaker there to... Dean Ambrose, and now Stone Cold makes the tag into the Animal Batista, and it, it's been a while since the Animal had got involved in this match. As first, it was Batista getting isolated, then Stone Cold had a crack at uh, participating in the match, and now it's Dean Ambrose working down Batista. I don't know what I, that. I don't know. I don't think that means anything. Roll up here by Ambrose. One and a kick out by Batista. And now Ambrose, he gets countered by Batista and sent into the corner. Is now Batista maybe going to tag out? And he does to Stone Cold Steve Austin. And now what is this? Oh, a nice double team sending Austin rocketing into Dean Ambrose with that clothesline. And now into the cover. One, two. But Seth Rollins gets over there to break up the pin at almost a three count there. But Seth Rollins got there just in time. And a nice leg sweep there by Stone Cold Steve Austin. And now Ambrose shoves him off. There's a kick to the gut blocked, and he went for the punch, but Ambrose was able to dodge. And now it's Ambrose maybe looking to tag out as he's got Austin in the corner of the shield. And Seth Rollins gets in this one. Ooh, a nice snapmare. And what is this? Ooh, a big boot to the face. What a double team maneuver there. And Rollins into the cover hooks the leg on Austin. One, two. No, only a one count. There's Austin manages to kick out of that pretty, that was a pretty coordinated double team move there. And now Seth Rollins and Iris Whip sending Stone Cold into the corner, but Austin fights out of it. And now, roll up there by Seth Rollins, but Stone Cold is able to get a rope break there to get out of the uh, pinfall attempt there. And now, once again, Hurricanrana, Hurricanrana, into the cover, one, and a kick out by Austin. And now look at Rollins with these frequent cover attempts, but yet another kick out by Stone Cold as Rollins just trying to get the victory here out of desperation with the roll-ups. But now Austin throws him off here. Looking to slow down the pace of the match, but here's Seth Rollins firing back, and a kick to the face. As that was Seth Rollins' style of offense to quicken the pace, but now here's Dean Ambrose. Very methodical is Dean Ambrose. So he's going to look to try and slow things down here a little bit, but Austin takes him down. Is that... That's what makes Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins a good team, is Ambrose, he's that slow, methodical, calculated wrestling style, whereas... Seth Rollins, he can quicken the pace and try to wear out his opponent with uh, quick strikes and uh, just overall quick offense, some high-flying moves. So these two work together as, as a pretty cohesive, ah, pretty good team, pretty cohesive unit. Uh, I don't think you can say pretty cohesive. That doesn't sound right. But anyway, and now Dean Ambrose takes Batista down with a leg sweep. And Ambrose there, Seth Rollins. Yelling into Dean Ambrose there, trying to get him fired up. What a big clothesline by the animal. 
And now into the cover. One, two. Oh, but there's Seth Rollins there to break it up once again. And I, I think that was actually needed because that was a pretty huge clothesline. He was looking to take his head off there. And now here's the Fujiwara armbar. Just with that armbar on Ambrose, but Seth Rollins gets in there to break it up. And now Batista going after Rollins here, but Rollins fights him off. And now gets out of the ring as he did have a five count there. He didn't want to get disqualified. And a nice Total World Slam takedown by Batista. And he makes the tag into Stone Cold Steve Austin. As now Austin has Ambrose by the arm. And he's got him up for a back suplex. Very sudden, quick, impactful back suplex there. Now Austin with the punches to the face of Dean Ambrose. As Austin and Ambrose, I mean... Nah, never mind. Their styles aren't similar. I mean, while Ambrose does have a very methodical, slow, calculated offense, Stone Cold does have a little bit of that, but he's more of a brawler. He's got a bit more of a brawler's offense. He likes to throw those punches, throw the middle fingers, the kicks, the stunners. But there's an elbow to the face there by Austin as he countered whatever Rollins was going for there. Went for a stunner, but Seth Rollins blocks it. And now he's got Austin here for a nice neck breaker. Is that, I mean, Rollins, he can't take another Stone Cold Stunner. He may have kicked out a one, but there's no way he can take a second as Austin kicks out there. And now there was a punch to the face by Rollins, but now Ambrose getting in there to break it up. And now a nice springboard drop kick by Seth Rollins. Very acrobatic maneuver there to manage to turn himself around in midair. And now that awesome wake-up taunt, but there's Austin with a counter. I think Rollins might have been going for his finisher, but he takes down Austin with a nice sweep out, sweep of the legs. And now, backbreaker there as he caught the running Austin using his momentum against him there with that neckbreaker. And into the cover, hooking the leg here. One. No, but there's Batista there to break it up before two count. And now Batista has Rollins from behind here. But Rollins fighting him off. And he they went for the drop kick, but he accidentally connected with the referee here. But the referee actually got up pretty quickly. And now Austin, a second Stone Cold stunner. That's got to do it, folks. That's got to be it. Stone Cold. That's the second stunner to Seth Rollins. It's It's got to be over. I think it's academic at this point. No, what the... What? Seth Rollins got up. I mean, what is it going to take to put away Seth Rollins just now? That's, he's taken two Stone Cold stunners, but very smart move by Rollins there to tag out to Dean Ambrose. And Ambrose taken down Stone Cold. And now Ambrose hooks the leg here. One, the referee was very slow, not not even in position there. I, I swear, we got to get some better refs here. Went for the punch, but it was blocked. And Ambrose once again with a total world slam, taking down Austin. And now just dragging him away from the ropes here. Oh, Ambrose maybe looking at that submission hold. And he's got it locked in. He's got him in that face stretch headlock. I don't know, but anyway, Batista breaks it up there with a kick to the face to Ambrose. Forcing Ambrose to break the submission. And now a kick to the gut by Austin. And now Ambrose blocks whatever Austin was going for there. It looks like we've got a back and forth struggle here. Both superstars maybe looking to use their finishers. But here's Ambrose. Ambrose with the headlock driver on a Stone Cold. And now into the cover. One, two, three. And the Shield is victorious here tonight. And a very good matchup there. It was a very long match. Uh, I think actually the longest we've had in this since our show has begun and Ambrose and Seth Rollins get the victory on behalf of the Shield very game competition were Stone Cold and Batista proving they can have a really good match as a tag team they can work together and you never know maybe down the line they could be tag team champions but for now they're on the losing end of a great match against the Shield here and anyway let's get moving on into our next matchup which is a rematch from last week Dolph Ziggler versus Roman Reigns and it looks like Damian Sandow is going to come out to watch this one but we know Roman Reigns got the victory over Dolph Ziggler last week as Ziggler had the chance to become number one contender and he was unsuccessful the following contest is scheduled for one fall making his way to the ring Accompanied by the self-professed intellectual savior of the masses, Damian Sandow from Hollywood, Florida, weighing 223 pounds, Dawn Ziggler. It's tonight the night the losing streak ends for this superstar.
Day two of this commentary begins, and this is the third time, well, the second time I've had to do this part, because the stupid cord in the back of my microphone wasn't plugged in all the way, so my shitty built-in microphone on my laptop was recording the audio, and it was garbage, even though it was a good commentary. So, I gotta do this again. So, anyway, we're here with Roman Reigns and Dolph Ziggler, as we know. Dolph Ziggler had a match with Roman Reigns last week, and, well, that, that all went down because Dean Ambrose claimed that the Cruiserweight division wasn't tough enough for him, and thus he changed the title from the Cruiserweight to the Hardcore Championship, and now Dolph Ziggler, well, he had, Dolph Ziggler wanted to prove that he could be a challenger for Dean Ambrose's Hardcore Championship, and so Ambrose said, okay. I'll give you a title match at Extreme Rules if you can defeat an opponent of my choosing, which was, of course, Roman Reigns. And Dolph Ziggler, although he had a valiant effort, he took Roman Reigns to the limit. He was unsuccessful in his attempt to become number one contender for the Hardcore Championship. But now, the question is, who will, be, who will face Ambrose for the Hardcore title this Sunday at Extreme Rules? I guess we'll have to wait and find out uh, what's going to go down there, what the whole situation there will be, but anyway, another interesting situation here is that of Damian Sandow, as last week, he interfered in that match between Ziggler and Roman Reigns, attacking Roman Reigns, and during the middle of the match, we thought, we weren't sure what he was going to do, but he came out and attacked Roman Reigns, and we need to yet, or we're yet to figure out what Damian Sandow's agenda and all this is, what, what role does Damian Sandow have to play, I guess we'll have to find out. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll find out tonight, or something, something's got to be, maybe we'll find out soon what exactly Damian Sandow's part here is. Ziggler off the top rope, got caught, and a powerbomb by Rowan Reigns. Alright, so you just heard me taking the drink, big Samoan drop there by Roman Reigns, sorry. Rip headphone users, possibly, I don't know. But, you guys just heard me taking a drink, and... I wouldn't have had to if I didn't have to restart the freaking commentary. Yeah, but anyway, uh, this is my, like the, I didn't have enough time to record the whole thing yesterday, which is probably good because I'm feeling a little bit better than I was yesterday, and my voice is sounding a little bit better. I don't have to, like, my nose isn't as stuffed, so, uh, I'll be able to, you know, actually talk better, and my vo my throat isn't really that scratchy. I just had to get one drink because I just recorded, uh, I was just talking for 20 minutes, so of course I had to get a drink at some point, and now I gotta talk for 20 minutes again, so, yay, okay, anyway, so, Roman Reigns now with his knee to the back, pulling back there on Dolph Ziggler with the submission hold, but Sandow now up on the apron distracting the wrath of Sandow, he hasn't done, he hasn't gotten too involved in this one, but right there, I don't, I don't think he was really saving Ziggler there, maybe he was, but if Ziggler had tapped out, the referee wouldn't have seen it. And now Ziggler adding his usual flair to a usual neck snap there, but um, adding that Dolph Ziggler flair. And now Ziggler with the headstand headlock, just increasing the pressure to the head of Roman Reigns. And now Ziggler, he's on the offensive here, calling for Roman Reigns to get up here. Going for the super kick, but no, Roman Reigns countered. And now Sandow, they're just spectating on the outside, but is he really on Ziggler's side, or is he maybe looking to uh, give Ziggler the same sort of uh, treatment that Ryback got from Brock Lesnar? Is he just Are they temporary, temporary allies, and Sandow maybe trying to get the better of Ziggler in the end? But Roman Reigns into the cover, and a kick out off the clothesline by Roman Reigns. And now Sandow is in the ring, but Sandow does, he does leave the ring now. And here's Dolph Ziggler, gets caught into another Samoan drop by Roman Reigns, but I mean, we don't know who's going to challenge Dean Ambrose for the Hardcore Championship, as Ziggler, he lost his number one contenders match last week, so he's out, and there's a big spear by Roman Reigns, as Ziggler may be unconscious here, he may be out cold, as now Roman Reigns dragging Ziggler into the cover, and now Sandow up on the apron there, once again distracting the referee, as Ziggler now, this buys him some time to kick out, and kick out he does, as Roman Reigns now. Ziggler went for the drop kick, but he got swatted down by Roman Reigns. As the referee still distracted, Roman Reigns into the cover, but Ziggler kicks out again. As Sandow distracting the referee. Now Roman Reigns runs into a DDT there by Dolph Ziggler. 
And now Ziggler could be looking to put the big man away here. Setting up Roman Reigns. And now Sandow once again back in the ring. I don't know what Sandow is doing here. He doesn't want to get Ziggler disqualified. But the sleeper hold is locked in by Dolph Ziggler. And Roman Reigns, he's got to tap out. He's got to submit. And although for a sleeper hold, people don't usually tap out. I mean, if anything, they pass out. And then, you know, they do the whole lift the arm, one, two, three thing. But it's not a big deal. You get the point. Dolph Ziggler defeats Roman Reigns. As you see with that big Samoan drop earlier. But, I mean, Damian Sandow's presence did help Ziggler in this one. As Ziggler, he got, he got broken in half with Roman Reigns' spear. But as you see, Roman Reigns running into a DDT. And, of course, Sandow's interference eventually turning the tide for Ziggler to win with that sleeper hold. And put Roman Reigns away. And, okay, it looks like... Looks like Sandow's here to help Ziggler. It looks like maybe, maybe we have a new tag team brewing here. We could see the Damian Sandow Dolph Ziggler alliance. The uh, little bit of um, uh, uh, I don't I don't know. I'm trying to come up with some like tag team name that you know people the ones that people make where it like mixes their gimmicks. So we could have like the the uh, the show off. The the, 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 the I, 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 don't, I don't know. I can't I can't do it. I would not want to be Jinder Mahal right here, folks. Is he's got he's got to face an angry Ryback. Is Ryback just viciously slamming Jinder Mahal off the mat? Is Ryback he had a match against Brock Lesnar last week and he lost. And Ryback with, with a victory there, he probably would have been number one contender for the de for the World Heavyweight Championship. I don't know what I was gonna say, but now that Brock Lesnar's won, he's in fact the number one contender. He'll be facing Triple H at Extreme Rules for the title. And now Ryback, I mean. He lost his chance. He was defeated by Lesnar, stabbed in the back, and then he couldn't get his revenge last week. So now Ryback looking to vent his frustrations here, just beating down on Jinder Mahal. It's Mahal yet to get out of the gates here, and I doubt he will. It's Ryback, he's he's an angry beast here. As now he sends Jinder Mahal rocketing into the corner, and now Jinder Mahal, he's, I don't know, he could be out already, but big power slam there is Ryback now. Could be looking to finish it here soon, hopefully, because this is just a one-sided beatdown. And once again with the Thez Press, Ryback, he's just not letting Jinder Mahal get out of the gates in this one. He's just destroying Jinder Mahal here. As 3MB has a tag team matchup at the pay-per-view, but I, based on this sort of beating, I don't, I don't know if Jinder Mahal is going to be there. I don't know if he's going to be a ringside to help them out against the Real Americans in that tag team match, but Ryback... Looking to fire up the crowd here. He's maybe looking to decapitate Jinder Mahal there with that mean hook clothesline. And he may have just knocked his head clean off. And Ryback looking to finish it. Please do. This is just a one-sided beatdown. This is a nightmare for Jinder Mahal. And now, hopefully, Ryback looking to end it here. Marching around the ring. 
And a shell shock to Jinder Mahal. And that's got to do it. Ryback hooks the leg. One, two, three. And Ryback makes quick work of Jinder Mahal here tonight. Just venting his frustrations on the poor 3MB member. And uh, you see right here, just with that big power slam, as Ryback just showcasing his power and strength. But not only that, but his, his aggressiveness, his viciousness, as he's just, his frustration was all taken out on Jinder Mahal here tonight. But I'm sure Ryback, he's still got more frustration built up inside that he's saving for Brock Lesnar. And now what is this? Roman Reigns from behind. Roman Reigns taking out Ryback with that steel pipe. And Ryback has had issues with the shield. That's what started his beef with Brock Lesnar. But the shield, Roman Reigns coming out and attacking Ryback. So that I think, all right, I'm getting word from myself. Yeah, uh, okay, anyway, so it's going to be the Shield, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Dolph Zick. No, Dean, you know, screw it. I'll address it in the next match because we have Triple H versus Barack Lesnar. So we're here now with our main event, Triple H, the World Heavyweight Champion, competing in his first match in this multiverse mode. He's going up against the number one contender, the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. But what I was trying to address before we got into the entrances was that at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, I'm just receiving word from myself, the general manager, I don't know, that it will be Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns will be teaming up in a six-man tag team match against the team of Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, and Damian Sandow. That's right, we'll be having a six-man tag between those six superstars at the pay-per-view. And not only that, but if, if the team of Dolph Ziggler, Damian Sandow, and Ryback gets the victory, then Dolph Ziggler will get a championship matchup against Dean Ambrose, but if the Shield is victorious, then Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, and Damian Sandow will all be competing in a triple threat match the following night. Or I didn't mean to say that Dolph Ziggler would be getting a number one contender's spot, but what will happen is someone, one of the three, will be getting a shot at the championship that Dean Ambrose holds. And I guess we'll have, I don't know, I can't talk now. I just stuttered and I screwed up. But it will be 
if they win that match, someone on the team will be getting a title shot. We're not sure who just yet, but it will be determined. I guess whoever gets, okay, whoever gets the pinfall, whoever gets the pinfall in that match will be the number one contender for Dean Ambrose's Hardcore Championship and will face Dean Ambrose for the title the night after the pay-per-view, which will be, of course, on our next show. So, the, the, yeah, the next show after, I can't talk now, I keep, I was about to say SummerSlam. Then, the following night, after Extreme Rules, whoever gets the pin over the shield, if they should win, will be facing Dean Ambrose for the Hardcore Championship. So, say, Dolph Ziggler pins any member of the shield during the match, then Dolph Ziggler will get a title shot against Dean Ambrose. But, on the other hand, if the Shield wins, then the following night, it will be Ryback versus Damian Sandow versus Dolph Ziggler in a triple threat match. So, either way, I mean, that definitely won't be too good for the team of Ziggler, Sandow, and Ryback, I guess, because... You know, with Ryback, he's still furious with Brock Lesnar, and if they would lose to the Shield to Ryback, that would just add more frustration. So, I think it might be... Well, you can't really say it's a no-brainer, but I'd have to put my money on Ryback should the three have to compete in a triple threat. But we'll have to see how those three superstars can work together as a unit, and if they will have the ability to take out the Shield. But for now, we have Brock Lesnar versus Triple H, as these two will square off this Sunday at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view for the World Heavyweight Championship as Triple H now competing in his first matchup in this universe mode, in this multiverse mode. And Lesnar, he's already, well, he's got the upper hand on the shield, he's got the upper hand on Ryback. I mean, Brock Lesnar, he's been making a statement in these first couple of weeks. And he's definitely deserving of the title of number one contender for Triple H's title, or Triple H's one heavyweight title. So I guess we'll have to see. Come the pay-per-view, could Lesnar walk out the champion? I guess we'll have to find out. This match definitely could have implement implementations as to what could go down there. So, I mean, Lesnar, he's riding quite a hot streak, whereas Triple H making his in-ring debut here, so... Brock Lesnar's got the momentum. Triple H could really use the win here to try and jumpstart some momentum heading into the pay-per-view. Whereas if Lesnar wins, then, I mean, it'd be hard to see Triple H walking out of the Extreme Rules pay-per-view with the title. I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Whoever wins here, I mean, you have to say would have a higher chance of walking out the champion. But you also got to worry about potential injuries. These two superstars could easily be looking to injure their opponent and try to weaken them before the pay-per-view, as that's exactly what this match could create. But Brock Lesnar taking, nearly taking Triple H's head off with a clothesline. And now Brock Lesnar, he's got Triple H setting him up here for a powerbomb. And now he's got him up for a second, and maybe he's got one more in mind. And yes, he does. Brock Lesnar with the third powerbomb to Triple H. And into the cover here. Two. No, but Triple H gets out. Alright, that's my last drink. I, I promise that's my last drink. But anyway, so now Triple H once again to the arm of Brock Lesnar. As Triple H, he's got Brock Lesnar for a hip toss, sending Brock Lesnar head over heels into the mat. And now Triple H dragging him away from the ropes here, hooking the leg here. One. No, not even one count as Brock Lesnar powers out. And now he counters, sending Triple H off the ropes into, oh my god, he threw him up in midair and caught him with the F5. And he plants Triple H face first into the mat and Lesnar into the cover. One, two, three, no, Triple H. Triple H kicks out. And I guess that's why he is the World Heavyweight Champion. As Brock Lesnar, he hit a catapult F5. But Triple H showing his resolve to kick out. One, two, and once again, Triple H kicking out. Brock Lesnar's got to be in disbelief that Triple H kicked out of the F5. I mean, Lesnar threw him up in midair, caught him, and then put him up into that F5. But Triple H still kicked out. And now Lesnar raking the eyes as he now might have to resort to some dirty tactics in order to win this one. I mean, he's got to be thinking... What is it going to take to put away Triple H here tonight? But Triple H now 
He's got Lesnar on his back feet here. And now into the cover one, but no, Lesnar kicks out. It's Lesnar, he's got to try and get back in control here. But Triple H, on the other hand, he desperately needs a comeback here. As Lesnar has Triple H in a headlock. As Triple H gets taken down with a suplex. And Triple H, he needs to start building some momentum here very soon. Or else it could be all over for the game. As Brock Lesnar with a belly-to-belly -to -belly toss. And now, he's got a Dragon Sleeper hold locked in. Looking to make the game tap out. And Brock Lesnar has really got it locked in. Just wrenching back on the head and neck of Triple H. But he lets go there as Triple H does not tap out. Triple H is still in this one. And now with a punch to the face of Brock Lesnar. Looking to get fired up with the strikes. And now he ducks behind. And he's got a full Nelson locked in on Brock Lesnar. And we have Triple H isn't much of a submission expert. But with a full Nelson here trying to overpower Lesnar. But Lesnar just powers out of the hold there. Breaking the full Nelson. And now Triple H counters and takes him down with a shoulder charge there. As Triple H, he desperately needs some offense here. Hooks the leg. One. And again, Brock Lesnar kicks out. I don't think Triple H has got a two count yet in this match. As now Lesnar with another belly to back throw there to Triple H. And now Brock Lesnar dragging the game away from the ropes once again. And goes into the cover. One. Two. And again, Triple H kicks out. Just barely staying alive in this one. And now Lesnar once again setting up the game for the triple power bombs here. And there's one. There's the second. And one more for good measure. Brock Lesnar looking to put down the game. One, two, three, and that's it. And Brock Lesnar in dominating fashion defeats Triple H here tonight. But Triple H, he did show some resiliency after kicking out of that F5, but in the end, the power and strength of the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar, which is too much for even the cerebral assassin, your world heavyweight champion Triple H to overcome. And could this be a force? Could this be a foreshadow of things to come this Sunday at Extreme Rules? Could Brock Lesnar be walking out the world heavyweight champion? I mean, he's got all the momentum. All signs are pointing to Brock Lesnar. I mean, if I were a betting man, I would have to put money on the Beast Incarnate to walk out the champion as he's got all the momentum. He even defeated Triple H here tonight, so we'll have to see come Extreme Rules. It is this Sunday. What's going to go down at the pay-per-view? We know. Just to go over the card real quick, we've got the Tag Team Championships between 3MB and the Real Americans. We've got a six-man tag, Dolph Ziggler, Damian Sandow, and Ryback versus The Shield. We've got a World Heavyweight Championship match between Brock Lesnar and Triple H. Could we have any other matches on the card? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. We may, may have any surprises, but let's go ahead and check out the rankings, the pre-rankings before the pay-per-view. As you can see, there was the WWE, or the World Heavyweight. God, getting them confused, but there's the hardcore rankings and the Tag Team Championships. So thanks for watching. Keep on YouTubing.